Okay, what I've got for you today is this unnecessarily complicated contraption that does two things. First of all, if a player steps on the string, the door will open. That's, that's pretty nice. Um, it will not actually open, it will just change its state, so um, the system detects if a player enters the string. Um, but the interesting thing about this contraption is that if a different entity enters the string, it does not detect it, it just completely ignores it. So as you can see here, other entities entered the string and the string did in fact update stuff, but um, the system didn't care. And this is kind of neat because um, you shouldn't be actually able to do that because, you know, the string just updates and other were up. But what can you detect other from the update? And um, the way the system works is um, it depends on update order because um, what we basically have here um, is we have a hopper butt, so a butted hopper, so if I um, give a block update to a hopper, the system um, will reset the hopper, so it's again butted, and a butted repeater, so if the repeater or the hopper receive a block update, they will turn off, or hopper will transfer his item into this dropper, so just two butts. And we um, have when a system that compares um, the timings of these two buts because um, the interesting thing is that first of all hoppers or in general tile entity blocks come very um, late in the update order um, while repeaters are tile tick blocks uh, things like repeaters, comparators and torches come uh, much earlier than tile entity blocks and um, entities are processed in between those two except for the player. The client side of the player is um, very early in the tick actually. So um, players get processed before tile tick blocks and in general there's a lot more stuff in the update order and this is kind of very general. Um, but um, players, tile ticks, entities and tile entities happen in this order and um, this helps you to tell the difference between a player and an entity because if um, a player walks onto this block um, repeaters and hoppers hasn't, haven't been processed yet so they will both update within the same game tick um, while if an another entity enters this block repeaters have already been processed in the tick and won't process in the tick and won't process until the next tick so if a um, creeper enters this block the hopper will update and we can detect that but um, the repeater won't update until the next tick where everything repeats and um, so basically the repeater will have kind of one additional game tick of delay or um, you can also make theories where you claim that the hopper has one game tick less delay um, but um, from the game code perspective the repeater will have one game tick more delay but you can detect the difference between these two updating in the same game tick which means a player entered the string and um, the hopper updating one game tick before the repeater which happens if an entity enters the string and I just wanted to show this because I think it's it might be useful to be able to tell the difference between a player and another mob with kind of a pressure pl plate light like thing and um, also to show the applications of precise timings because we are currently um, I have made a, a precise timing theory with uh, Shari and Nathan Nasmus and you can predict this behavior kind of we don't really have a hopper theory but um, we just treat hoppers like any tile entity block um, and very recently um, a timing theory by Sankan and Sutherland came out which um, and partially contradicts the code of the game but it can also make uh, correct predictions about this um, but they for example don't say that the repeater would gain another tick of delay because he waits they would rather say that the hopper loses one game tick which is an approximation which gives you also um, the same result basically because you can also make it. Um, so I just wanted to show that both timing theories um, are useful because both allow you to create something like this. And uh, well, I should maybe mention that Sankan and Zelda theory 
cover small stuff. For example, we don't care um, how the input is if the block is replaced by a never portal or if it's um, cut by a falling sand instead of an anvil or something like that and they did test all that. We have a more basic precise time of theory but our time of theory is more code based but I just thought this is kind of neat. Oh uh, yeah, that's basically all.